Okay, now. How are we gonna do this? Uh, I think we will go counterclockwise. But I'll start with the middle. Oh, hey, it's you! Dorothy, is that you? Wow, look at all the stuff they're selling here. I'm getting a kink in my neck just turning my head trying to take it all in. She's so into her surroundings, it looks like she can't even hear you. <laughs> can I help you find something? My medicine can take care of almost any kind of ailment! So you sell medicine, eh? There seems to There seems to be almost anything one could ever want here in the Bose Market. That's for sure. The sheer amount of stuff for sale is pretty overwhelming. Okay, uh actually. Wait a sec. Uh Ah! Okay, like that. Yeah, this was just a little bit loud. Uh, the stuff of rates have definitely changed. They appear to have all gone up, overall. Uh... Okay, nothing new in there. Hmm, this one's quite the catch. I cannot rotate my camera. Tentatively speaking, I'm an employee here at the store to I help out my mother. I'm not playing around, just in case you're wondering. Good day and welcome! Hey there, you too! Have I... Have a look at my goods! I have everything you need! <laughs> my ears, they bleed. Well, this place is alive and bustling like everyone says. I wonder if it's like this all day. It is. People from all corners of Liberal gather here to, to grow their businesses. And their eagerness and zeal to succeed is nothing to be bought at. A hardware store. Okay, uh, this is new stuff. That's actually... Hmm, it has more range, but I think it's worse, worse overall. Uh, that is a strict improvement. Okay, well, I'll buy that. Uh, you know what, I don't think I'm gonna... I mean, maybe there will be a situation where I want to use it, but mostly I just want it for the sake of having it, if I'm being honest. Used by pro chefs, and sometimes in domestic disputes. Oh. Oh my. Let's just take a... Laundry pole turned weapon. Ingenious or pathetic? I've been living in Bose my whole life, but this is the first time I actually came to the market. Where to start? There are goods and stores all over the place. And <coughs> there's dust everywhere. The book I'm after isn't here. Maybe I should try checking out another shop. Good evening and oh, good day and welcome. I carry everything from antique books to textiles and daily necessities. Man, would you look at all this stuff? Mr. Renon's general store had lots of stuff, but this one carries even more than he does. Yep, it's pretty easy to see exactly why this store is here in the market. I stock a lot of important goods from the Empire and the Republic. 
so I'm pretty confident about my selection. Uh... Oh hey, chapter one! We'll take it! Actually, just uh <sighs> I stood there, upright in front of the revolving door, scuffing the heels of my boots against the ground, pulling slightly on the collar of my trench coat. I dropped my chin and gazed at my partial reflection in the curved glass. Aside from my short cropped hair, I wore a modest looking double-breasted leather raincoat and a pair of special order of steel reinforced boots, both of which at first glance appeared to be the most common of common apparel. Yet they were, in fact, much more than the naked eye could detect. My ordinary, average appearance, it was of just as much importance today as it had been on any other day in the past. Not far off, the sound of footfalls echoed rhythmically like the steady beat of a pendulum, swinging back and forth as the throngs of those coming and going move quickly along the cobblestone avenue, enveloped in tingled silver by the morning mist. At times, the calling voice of a street peddler disturbed the steady flow, but as soon as the hawking up cry faded away, it would resume its course. Each morning that I found myself setting foot in the Imperial City, I also found my surroundings to be unchanged and stained by that same somber tone of grey. Snatching up a magazine from underneath it of a street, ar street vendor, I tossed a few Mira into the left hand poised expectantly behind his back. The Imperial Chronicle, the magazine I read so often that even the ink bleeds were familiar. Roughly flipped o flipping open his cover, I scanned the headlines along the top of its monochrome pages. Then, suddenly, my breath caught in my throat! At the very bottom of the local news page, I found those letters. That sequence of characters which I had not heard nor seen since the time of that life-changing incident. My eyes instantly gravitated to the spot, and for a time remained fixated. Ain so late. The very meaning of those letters became lost to my senses, as I stood motionless, my gaze fixed on the same line of text until it all seemed to coalesce into a single blotch of ink. After a few seconds of blank comprehension, my vision settled, and I retched my eyes to the beginning of the article. As I began to read, my memories verged on a single point in my past, and then slowly started to run in reverse, heading for that fateful e event three years prior when this name was first introduced to me. Uh, hello! Yeah, uh, there's a lot of flowery prose in this book. It is a good thing it is short, because I don't think I'd have the patience to read this if it was really long. Um. <laughs> Sort of, so, sort of the opposite case uh, to the game at large, come to think of it. <sighs> it was an afternoon all those years ago, on a day not unlike this one, where the capital was overshadowed by its typical gloomy aura. I was a lot younger then, a 22-year-old boy who stood silently in front of the boutique door as usual double-checking his appearance before lightly treading over to Mitch's Imperial Factory. It was on this day that it had been arranged for me to receive a new job from Mick, the shop owner himself. Although he was dra a drab, a middle-aged man, I, being the ornament enthusiast I was, had found myself as one of his few regular customers. I headed down the dank alleyway. Okay, then. <laughs> And after passing through a partially rotted wooden gate, I could see the soft glow of the flickering orbital light just outside the entrance of the factory whose structure was halfway below street level. 
I first began receiving jobs from Mitch about the time when dissension began to occur in society over the Hundred Days of War. It was during this period that relations between the Liberal Kingdom and the Empire were at their worst, and the importation of ornaments had become almost non-existent. Conspiring with underground elements and planning a smuggling operation, Mitch made me out to be his accomplice in crime. After the job which I had received by his hand was none other than that of the courier. For the job. Uh, being nothing more than a commoner in my teens at the time I had met him, and a juvie devoid of any connections in life besides, I naturally jumped on the opportunity without a moment's hesitation. Yet, even after relationships, relations with Liberal had returned to some degree of normalcy, I realized that I was in no mood to give up my specialty, which focused mainly on the delivery of stolen goods. The reason being, there was no job out there that could bring the kind of Mira this one did. With an unrefined and inconspicuous appearance, I had countless times before hidden items of various sorts in my hat and trousers, and made my way hither and thither between the borders of these neighboring nations. And though to my delight my wallet had become increasingly laden with the bounty of monetary rewards, I had routinely changed my alias as a precautionary measure. So much, in fact, that these false names had built up into quite a list over the last few years. I had been known as Phil the Frivolous, Rooney the Trickster, even Chris the Coward. However, Mitch had always called me by one name, Toby. This was the identity I had used for my initial job and the one I liked above all others. Well, I read this one last time, so I'm not going to read it again. <laughs> it looks like a girl is running the confectionery shop now. Before, it was some guy running this place. I wonder what happened to him. Welcome! How about a fluffy, eggy sponge cake? It's a specialty here in the Bosse Market. Wow, that looks good. Does it? Oh. Okay. That is a good idea. Yeah, you better not forget, Joshua. Okay, let's show off. Uh... Hmm. And I will buy two of these. Are you? Tee this is the first time I've ever been allowed to go on an errand all by myself. Uh, let's see. Now what was I supposed to buy? How are you doing today? Is there anything I can help you find? I carry friends from the royal city here as well. If you would like, please have a look around. Looks like they sell- yep, it does. I can also do custom designs or tailor any clothes you'd like. Just keep that in mind if you decide you want something more fashionable than your current, uh, unique outfit. I think you just got burned as stuff. Uh... Okay, I, I can afford one of these right now. Defense plus two. Well, this is worthwhile to have. Wait, aren't these the shoes that Estelle wanted earlier? I feel like they are. Uh, I'm actually going to convert some of this, because I have a lot of it and it's worth a lot. Hmm, that's not actually enough, is it? Let's see, let's also do 30 of that, and 30 of that. Because I want one, even if it's not very good. Okay, you have knitted shoes. 
which are actually better than the Strega. Okay, well, you by far have the worst defense, so... Blind and poison. Blind and sleep. Prevents death. You know what? I'm pretty happy with what I have equipped it currently, I think. Thanks to the restrictions placed on everything by the army, nothing goes right. When I think about the price of getting things in stock, I feel like my business is gonna dry up. This guy's in a rather foul mood. <laughs> I imagine not. Yeah, that sort of lockdown is not good for a merchant. Uh... Let's see. Yeah, you definitely don't have a lot of stuff. Hmm. Should I try to make something with meat, or should I try something with fish? My pal Bucket has started raising prices on his goods. But in light of the situation, I guess I can understand why. Although, some of his prices seem a bit too high. Uh... Okay... Hmm... Well, I need more of this. Or I want more of this, I suppose I should say. Uh... Need some of that... I have plenty of that, I think. That's really expensive. Uh, let's get... This is not really expensive, so let's get a bunch more. Mm. Okay. Uh... Let's see, now who's having a sale today? Where's my memo? I've got it written down here somewhere. Okay, that was the full circuit of the market. Let's look around the market now. Good day, and welcome to Enter Rose. Do you have a reservation? And so it would seem. Tis as you say, yes. I am the manager Letcher. That's sort of an unfortunate name. I tend to the restaurant while the owner is away. Herein, the best quality ingredients and servers await you, amounting to the greatest dining experience of your life! I personally guarantee that you will partake of our delicacies, that if you partake of our delicacies, you will emerge full and satisfied. Please, come this way! I will gladly show you to a table. <laughs> hmm. Thirty large monsters that wow, okay. Yeah, we are not that rich. And this flavor hasn't changed one bit. It's as good as ever. I hear the owner of this place changed a few years back, but the quality certainly has not dropped. If anything, the food's gotten better! We began reaching out to certain goods here in Bose. And while we have no means of eliminating the problem, we can at least try to make it better, if only slightly. Army regulations, along with the grounding of the airships, have definitely had an effect on business that cannot be ignored. 
I need to reopen negotiations to get things squared away as soon as possible. Welcome! Welcome! My goodness, what a restaurant! It's just as gorgeous as I always hoped it would be. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, well, what should I order, I wonder? I am the soul... Sommelier. I don't know what that means, actually. If you have any questions or concerns regarding the wine, I will be more than happy to address them for you. I guess he's the wine guy. Hot, 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 hot! Ah, spice food is just the thing for an old man like myself. Brings back the old appetite, something fierce. I must say, this coriander-infused duck dish really does the trick. I bet I could eat another two of these, easy. We've come from the capital for food and shopping. The capital's quite lovely, I must admit. But this town gives it a run for its money. Oh? Obnoxious amount of money to spend on them. Well, at least you're self-aware. More shopping than food. <laughs> To a chef, each and every day is lived in pursuit of flavor. When the flavor stops, it's time to put the kitchen knife down once and for all. One must never be satisfied. Recipes must never stop evolving. Complacency disqualifies you as a chef. No complacent chef. For a complacent chef is no chef at all, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> so it would seem. It's amazing how tenacious the head chef is about his flavors. I'm trying to work on my flavors too. I even stayed in the kitchen all night to perfect a new soup recipe. Can, can I try it? I guess not. Um. Okay, I feel like there should be a balcony, but I don't see anywhere else to go out, so 